behind and were looking for me, so I wasn't going to use the name Kevin Mitnick. Why did I choose the name Eric Weiss? Because that was the real name of my idol magician, Harry Houdini. I thought I had a sense of humor, but I was quick to learn that the FBI had no sense of humor. <laughs> but anyway, that's a story for another day. So I, I actually acquired a job at a law firm under my, my alternate identity. And one of my colleagues handed me this brochure for the Microtech Ultralight cell phone. And this, this uh, cell phone, mind you, 1993 was like the iPhone today. It kind of reminded me like of the Star Trek communicator. Kind of cool. And as a hacker, I wanted to understand how this telephone worked, the protocols, how it, inter how it interfaced with the telephone network. I wanted access to the source code, right? To the secret recipe. So one day, it was three o'clock in Denver, Colorado, and I left the firm early. And when I, got, when I went down to the lobby floor, and it was a 50-story building, we actually occupied the top five floors of downtown Denver, I powered on my cell phone. Incidentally, not my name either. So the first number I called was directory assistance. And I asked for the telephone number from Motorola. They're the company that manufactures the Microtac Ultralight. And of course, the directory assistance operator gave me the toll-free number to Motorola Corporation. I got the number, I go, hi, um, this is Rick. I'm looking for the project manager of the Microtac Ultralight project. And the lady at Motorola, the receptionist, said, oh, sir, no problem. All our cellular phone development is handled out of Shopper, Illinois. Would you like their telephone number? Sure. She gave me the phone number, and that was my next call. I call Schomburg, Illinois, to Motorola, and I get a receptionist. I said, hi, I'm looking for the project man manager for the Microtech Ultralight Project. I'm transferred around two, three, four. By the eighth time, I'm talking to the vice president for R&D for all of Motorola. And by that time, during these eight calls, I realized they had another R&D facility in Arlington Heights. So I go, hi, this is Rick, over in Arlington Heights, and I'm looking for the project manager for the Micro, Micro, Microtech project. And the VP of R&D goes, oh, that's Pam, she works for me. Would you like her telephone number? Sure, maybe her phone number. He goes, can I help you with anything else? I go, no, that was it, thank you very much. Call Ambies. So who's my next call to? I call Pam. But I didn't get Pam. What I did get is her voicemail outgoing reading. And what she told her callers is she just left on a two-week vacation and she'd be returning on such and such date in the future. And if you had any problems whatsoever, to call Alicia on extension blah, blah, blah. So that was a very, piece, a very nice piece of valuable information. Alicia, so who's my next call to? Alicia. I go, hi, Alicia, this is Rick with R&D in Arlington Heights. How are you doing today? She goes, fine, how are you, Rick? I go, I'm doing great. I said, did Pam leave on vacation yet? Because when I spoke to her a week ago, she said she might be on vacation for a couple weeks. Oh, she did leave on vacation. Well, she was supposed to send me the source code to the Microtech Ultralight before she left, but she told me if she didn't get around to doing it because she was really under the gun to get things done before she left on vacation, that I could call you and you would help me out. So by this time, I'm walking down the street in Den downtown Denver. There are horns honking. It's outside. It's not like in a business environment. So this next question kind of caught me by surprise. She goes, Rick, what version do you want? And I had no idea what the version numbers were because I didn't actually research that. So I asked Alicia, I go, how about the latest and the greatest? So she's typing on her computer five, six, seven minutes. And she comes back and she goes, okay, Rick, I found the latest uh, source code tree for the Microtech Ultralight, but there's a problem. I go, what is it? She goes, there are hundreds of directories, and within those directories there are hundreds of files. I go, do you know how to use tar and gzip? like WinZip under Windows? 
She goes, no, what's that? I said, would you like to learn how to use the Tartar and Jesus? She goes, yeah, will you teach me? And I became her instructor for the day. So after today's lesson, we had a three megabyte file of the source code that I had wanted. So my next question to Alicia was, you know how to use a program called FTP? She goes, you mean file transfer program, right? And I go, yeah, precisely. And mind you, this was not prepared. I did this extemporaneously, just off the cuff. So I had no place for her to transfer the code, right? Then I remembered I had a, an anonymous account at some university in Colorado, but I couldn't give Alicia, please FTP at hacker.colorado.edu. That's a little bit suspicious, right? <laughs> But fortunately, I had a great memory for remembering numbers, and I actually remembered the IP address. So I said, Alicia, try opening a connection to this IP address, walk her through the process. And each time, she tried three or four times, it just sits there where it's trying to open the connection. There was no connectivity. And then she goes, Rick, she goes, I think what you're asking me to do is a security issue. I'm gonna go talk to my security manager. I'll be right back. And I go, no, no, no. But it was too late, I was already on hold. And I'm thinking, well, as soon as she tells somebody else what I'm asking her to do, they're gonna yell at her. So, four minutes pass, five minutes pass, and you know, when you're nervous waiting on a call, that time seems like 20 minutes. So I'm thinking, maybe they're hooking up a tape recorder, so when she comes back on the line, I'm gonna be very careful and not really talk. So she comes back on the line and she goes, Rick, uh-huh. She goes, I spoke to my security manager about what you're asking me to do. I go, uh-huh. Notice I'm not talking for that tape recorder. She goes, the IP address you gave me is not within Motorola. That's outside our company. I go, uh-huh. And she goes, my security manager said for me to transfer you this file, we need to use a special proxy server here at Motorola and he was kind enough to give me the username and password so I could transfer you the file. So by the time I plugged, by the time I walked home, which is a 15 minute walk from the law firm, I put the key into the door, the source code for the Microtech Ultralight was sitting at this Colorado University. So, Motorola, huge company. Do they have firewalls? Yes. Do they have IDS? Yes. Do they use RSA, secure ID to protect their whole campus? Yes. It took like four or five phone calls, talk to three or four people, and have the crown jewels. So the moral of the story goes, you can't just rely on the technology even though it's critical.